you don't even know I can make your hands clap Said I can make your hands clap Somebody sing your song Cause you've been sinning in the city I know too many troubles All these lovers got you losing control You're like a drug to me A luxury, my sugar Welcome to fabulous day 23 of your online math curriculum. I just wanted to take a moment to say how proud I am of you guys, right? Like this has been the hardest school year ever, yet we tackled that first unit with dignity and honor and we knocked it out of the park, right? It wasn't easy, but we killed it. Um, and I know we're going to do the same for unit two. I also am very stoked to see you guys back live in person. And while it won't be a normal school year, um, we still have uh, plenty of opportunities to learn and have fun together. It'll be a little bit different, but we'll work through it together. And to be honest, uh, I don't think any other class could do it as well as you guys are doing it this year. So keep up the good work. We're gonna knock it out of the park when we get back live, but let's get started with day 23. So uh, over the next two days, it's going to be kind of a review. Uh, we'll be talking about geometric and arithmetic sequences, Today we will be talking about all things linear. So, if we recall a linear sequence, we call them arithmetic sequences, right? They follow the form y equals mx plus b, or y equals the slope times x plus b. There is also another form, which is called point slope, and that is y minus the first y value equals the slope times x, minus the first x value. You have a point and you have a slope. Um, all linear equations should be straight lines and they should follow a pattern of having a common difference. So the number in between each of the steps of the pattern should always be exactly the same. All right, moving on. So uh, there's two different forms of equations we can write it from a slope and a y-intercept, or we can write it from a slope and a point, or we can write it from two points, right? So let's start off by writing an equation in slope-intercepts, right? We have a line like this. Wherever it crosses is going to be the b value. And this might feel like review but it's very common to get asked questions on this, right? So how much, where it crosses is B, and then the slope in this case is M. So remember we find slope by taking the rise, how much goes up or down, and putting it over the run. So the slope goes where M is, and the intercept goes where B is. If we just have a point and a slope, so let's say we have 0, 2, oh man, that would be the intercept. <laughs> let's say we have 2, 3, and a slope of 4, right? Plugging into this equation, right, we got a 4 that goes right there. And then this 2 and the 3 go in for their respective places in the equation. So we would have y minus our first y value, which is 3. Uh, equals 4, which was our slope, which was given to us in the equation, times x minus the first x point, which was 2. So that would be our point slope equation, right? Point slope equations are easier to write, but they're less useful, right? They require more steps for you to solve them. Okay, so now writing an equation from two points that aren't the y-intercept are probably 
the hardest thing we have to do with linear. So let's say we have negative two, negative four, and six, negative two. Okay, so we got two points, right? And the first thing we're gonna do is find the slope. So remember, our x values go on bottom. So this two and this six go on bottom. And you can go in either direction as long as you keep it the same way. I'm gonna go up in this case. So we got six minus negative two on bottom, right? We got this guy and this guy on bottom. And then we have the other two on top. So ne uh, negative four and a negative 10. Now, if I subtracted negative four from negative 10, I would be wrong. I have to stay in the same direction. Remember, I started with the six, so I have to start with the negative 10. Negative 10 minus negative four, right? And when we solve this fraction, we will have our slope. So negative 10 minus negative four would be negative six. Six minus negative two, the negatives cancel. Uh, but just for the record, Mr. Curry never likes to subtract things any, ever. So if I have a negative sign, I always flip the signs. And so I flip the sign and I flip the uh, sign of the number. So if I have six minus negative two, I flip both of them, right? And now it's six plus two, which is eight. If I have six minus two, right? I would still flip both of them, right? Six plus negative two would be the same thing, right? So Mr. Cartwright has never subtracted once he figured out that trick. His subtracting is gross. Anyways, our slope is negative six over eight, or negative three fourths. And we can go ahead and plug that into our equation. Y equals negative three fourths X. We still need to find our intercept or our B value. Right? And there is one way to do that, right? We're going to take our, one of our points, any point, doesn't matter which one, plug it into the equation and see if it's true. So I'm going to use blue to plug in my points. Right? And instead of this y value over here, we have a 6. So we have 6 equals negative 3 fourths x. We know what x is. Oh man, Mr. Carter. We know what x is in this case. In this case, x is. Oh, sorry, I already messed that up. <laughs> My bad, guys. All right, our first y value is negative 10, right? So we should have negative 10 equals negative 3 fourths times our x value, which is 6, right? And plus whatever. Right, plus b. So we have, now have an equation with just one variable. Negative 10 equals negative 3 fourths times 6 plus b. Um, we take 6 times negative 3 fourths, convert 6 into a fraction, goes straight across. 6 times negative 3 is 18. Negative 18, 4 times 1 is 4. So that reduces down to 6. Negative 6. No, no, Mr. Carter, not negative 6. Negative four and a half, right? So we have negative four and a half plus some number, b, right, equals negative 10. Finally, we would add four and a half to both sides, and we get negative five and a half equals b. Finally, we can plug that b value into our equation. And we get y equals negative 3 fourths x plus negative 5 and 1 half. Uh, hopefully that all made sense to you. Um, we should be able to do it from a graph, right? You figure out where that line crosses the y-intercept. You calculate the slope. The slope goes in for the m value and the y-intercept goes in for the b value. So we've already kind of practiced that. And the table is kind of easy. So um, hopefully you can write a linear equation and be able to explain it to me and write it in both forms, both point and point slope and slope intercept. Thank you very much for paying attention. Now please return to the live classroom. I know what it's like to lose. 
feel so desperately that you're right, yet to fail nonetheless. <laughs>